What's up guys? So today I want to talk about a mistake that I see more often made by junior residents and medical students which has major implications and how you can avoid making this mistake to get the most out of your medical training. Now if you guys are new to the channel, my name is Ramiz. I'm a board certified internal medicine physician, now back in residency for a second time. I'm currently training in radiology. I'm a second year radiology resident. So I spent quite a bit of time being a resident physician. So this is a mistake that I see more often than not. A lot of medical students that come through radiology, I had plenty of medical students when I was back in medicine. I also had you know, multiple residents that I helped, junior residents. I also had my own residents when I practiced as an attending. So I've seen this mistake made often enough. I've made this mistake myself. So I wanna tell you about it so that you can avoid it. So let's get into exactly what I'm talking about. This mistake is not being an active learner when it comes to the clinical rounds. Nowadays, there's been a big push. There's always been there, but there's been a big push in particular now about passive learning versus active learning. And everyone agrees that active learning is just better to maximize your scores as well as you know better have you learn whatever you're trying to teach yourself. So why does that not apply to the clinical scenario? Many times people don't really talk about that you have to be an active learner while you're doing your clinical rotations as a medical student as well as as a resident. Now what exactly do I mean by this? What I mean is that when you're on, on the wards doing your thing in your training, there's going to be multiple scenarios where you're going to run into issues. Maybe the nurse is going to call you and bring up an issue to your attention that needs to be addressed. Maybe radiology is going to call you about a study and you're going to have to address the issue. Now. Throughout residency, you're always going to be reminded that you have to escalate. And that's true because at the end of the day, the number one priority is always patient care. Never delay patient care. If there's something you feel like you don't understand and you know that there's somebody there that can help the patient, always do what's best for the patient. So you're always going to escalate. Every junior resident is going to escalate to their more senior residents. The senior residents are going to escalate to the chief. And eventually, we're going to get escalated to the attending, right? So that's, that's just a normal chain of command. So number one priority, make sure that the patient is safe. But now when you're expected as a resident to escalate something that you're not understanding, there's two ways to do it. As these scenarios come up throughout the day, which is going to happen multiple times throughout the day, each and every single day, you're going to run into scenarios where you may not be confident on what to do next. So you're going to escalate the situation to your senior attending, but you have two choices. You can either passively escalate the situation, do exactly what the senior attending says or whatever your attending says and just move on and that's it. You did what was best for the patient. No one's going to fault you for it. Or what you can do is you can pick up the phone call from radiology, from the nurse, assess the problem in your mind, come up with a potential solution. Maybe it's an abnormal lab result. Maybe it's an abnormal imaging finding. Come up with a potential solution of why you think that lab result could be, what is the reasoning, what you can do next to, because you found this uh, you know, abnormal finding on imaging, what would be the next step in management, and then escalate to your senior. Call up your senior and say, hey, the nurse just called me or the lab just called me. This is the problem. This is what I think could be causing the problem. Maybe we can do this. Maybe we can do that. What do you think? That way, it's better for you as a resident because now you're actively thinking about the problem. You're actively trying to make a decision, but at the same time, you're still being monitored and you're still being uh, watched over by your senior resident. So at, the, so at the end of the day, the patient benefits, but then you also benefit because you're doing active learning so that next time it happens, you'll be a little bit more confident in making the decision because that's basically what residency is all about. You're learning how to make independent decisions in a chaotic time, but it's organized chaos. You're being watched over by more senior residents. You have an attending that's overlooking everything. So it's organized chaos. This is your time to practice making independent decisions because there's going to come a time when you won't have any to rely on. You won't have anyone to escalate. You're, you're going to be the one calling all the shots. So like I said, there's, there, there's two ways and, and it happens. Sometimes you get so busy that you don't actively think about it. Hey, you know what? An issue came up. Let me call my senior resident, tell him what's going on. He'll tell me what to do. She'll tell me what to do and I'll just, just do it. But then you're just passively, you're doing your job. You're making sure the patients are safe. Everything's neat and tidy and you go home and that's it. And chronically when that happens over years, by the time you finish your residency, 
you just won't get everything that you should have gotten out of residency. And like I said, it's happened. I've done it multiple times as well, but it's always better that whenever there's an issue that you come up and you, when you escalate it to your senior resident, make sure you've thought about it beforehand. Make sure you've thought about what it could represent, potential differential diagnoses, why this could be happening, and make sure you've thought about what to do next. Make sure you're anticipating in your mind what the next step is, and even better, you can bring it up to the resident. Now, second big mistake that I feel like a lot of trainees make, you have to respect the ancillary staff. And in particular, you have to respect the nurses. Now, at the end of the day, us as physicians, we come and we work in the hospital. This is not our house. The nurses are the ones in charge of the hospital. We just come to work in the hospital. What do I mean by this? What I mean is that the nurses spend majority of the time with the patients and they have oftentimes ample experience compared to us trainees as well as you know even when you become an attending there's nurses that have more experience than you and experience is key when it comes to medicine so always take your nurses seriously never disrespect your nurses and never have any type of complex in your mind where you think that you're above anyone else in the hospital at the same time you have to learn and this is a skill that you're going to learn over time you can't let other people dictate the management for your patients you still have to be confident you still have to know what you're doing but do not dismiss your nurses whatsoever they're the ones that really run the hospital so anytime a nurse brings up a concern with you respectfully hear it address it and don't just brush it off thinking that it's 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 not true at the end of the day, you know, you have to take the nurses really seriously. Take advantage of their ample experience. The nurses have all this experience. Talk to them, ask them questions, learn from them. The first time I learned how to place an IV, the first time I learned how to draw blood was from the nurses. The first time that I learned about different IV management and IV fluids was from nurses. They have a lot of experience, a lot of knowledge. Use them, you know, respect them. And that's the only way that you guys together will be able to provide the best experience for your patients. Now, these are two major tips that I think are going to help you become a success successful resident and be a successful medical student. Those are my tips that will help you definitely succeed in residency, get the most out of your residency, and also become a great medical student. Let me know your thoughts down below. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And more videos coming soon. So until next time.